to my channel my name is Reese and we are back again for another end of rotation review this month I was in general surgery and I'm gonna start off by telling you what a typical day was for me depending on what day of the week it was so of course I'm gonna start with Monday um well to begin with this rotation required me to get up every morning at 5 a.m. because it was all the way in another city in a very rural community so I had to get up and travel and the commute time was about 45 minutes if I did not hit traffic so that was a big factor but once I got there I would park in the back of the hospital and come in through the physician entry for surgery I would come in and change my clothes into the hospital scrub so that we were all uniform and that even though I wasn't staff, but I was staff for that month. And after I would change in, of course, I would, you know, do the proper attire with the booties and the cap for the hair. And then I would go scrub in immediately, no matter what type of cases that we had on the board for the day. Because, excuse me, after I would change my clothes, before I would scrub, I would look at the board to see, you know, what do we have for the day? Do we have endoscopies? Um, do we have colonoscopies? Are we doing a lipoma excision? Are we doing a hernia repair? Are we doing a coli cystectomy? So depending on what it was, I would scrub in, but then I just learned to scrub in regardless because we could have an emergency surgery or something that requires me to help the doctor or assist the doctor in surgical procedure and if I'm not scrubbed in then that would just take like extra time so if you just scrub in regardless then you know you can just refresh with the surgical hand sanitizer and then gown and glove and be ready to go so um that's what I would do after I would scrub in I would always always speak to everybody when I come in and then whoever I didn't speak to after I finished uh, scrubbing in I would go make my rounds and speak to all the staff see if they needed help with anything um, watch them put in IVs talk to the patients while I'm waiting on my doctor to arrive because most of the time I got there before he got there um, once he got there of course we would go through the board step by step it wouldn't always go in order because sometimes patients would cancel procedures um, sometimes it would be an, an insurance issue or sometimes it would just be as simple as the patient just changed their mind and they don't want the procedure anymore. What I saw a lot of was colonoscopies and EGDs. A lot of people complained of abdominal pain, um, throwing up, nausea, or either they might have had a history of um, colon cancer in their family and they were getting a screening or they were just simply getting a screening because it was time. Um, that's the surgery day my doctor also did wound care so diabetic foot ulcers charcoal foot um calluses debridement and just uh decubitus ulcers we saw all the ulcers all the how, what some people would say nasty smelly stuff but it really didn't bother me because like i shared with you guys before i did cna work i worked in the hospital i've seen decubitus ulcers stage four so I know what it's like to see and smell those things I know what it's like to do wound care um, so it really didn't bother me some people don't like it because they say it smells it stinks it's disgusting but I just look at every patient this way and I might be getting on a little bit of a soapbox but if it's if that was you or one of your loved ones or a family member then you wouldn't think it's nasty or disgusting or maybe you would but you would suck it up because it's them and that's what you know it's all about in the healthcare field you might not necessarily care in the moment for what you have to do but you need to because it's a patient but the patient is more than just a patient it's a human being but anyway so we have wound care days and we would usually go to wound care either all day or after we finished our morning cases because he didn't really do cases in the afternoon then we would go into another day and it would kind of be like um a office day it was kind of similar to my family medicine excuse the phone ringing in the background it was kind of similar to my family medicine rotation except it was for surgery consultation but 
there were two other doctors that worked along with my doctor in his practice and um, one of the doctors there has been there for years and his patients even though he's a surgeon they only want to go to him for their primary care so they would come to the office to a surgical office and be seen and I mean, I know for some people that might be different, odd, or shocking, but in a real rural communities, access to healthcare is very limited. They don't really have huge hospitals and a lot of resources that the big cities have. So it's kind of like wherever they can get their care, they'll even come to the emergency room. So we had some people, and they weren't young people, they were all older people um, would come in and see the doctor and want to get their blood pressure medication refilled, um, want to get their arthritis medication refilled or any of the, you know, the primary care stuff. They, they also could do it and write prescriptions there. Um, we also excised a lot of suspicious lesions or lesions that looked cancerous. I saw more actinic keratosis, seborrheic keratosis than I thought I would. Um, and we found out that the insurance companies really don't pay for seborrheic keratosis removal. So you would have to try and say you thought it was a suspicious lesion or and send it off to pathology. But then once you sent it off, if it came back seborrheic, they wouldn't cover it. So most of the time we would do cryotherapy in the office. Um, what else did we do? I got a chance to diagnose plantar fasciitis, which was cool without the doctor being there. So big up, so I'm moving right along. Um, what else did I see? What else did I see? And just a lot of consultations for like hernia repairs. Um, we had internal hemorrhoids, well thrombosed internal hemorrhoids where we have to do an IND and remove the clot. So we could do that right there in the office. We had excisions of fingers where we had to create flaps and sew them back together. My very first day we removed the lipoma from the right upper quadrant of um, a patient and I got a chance to close doing all sorts of sutures. So that's something I can tell you, sutures. I've learned how to do the, of course, the simple but We saw some patients who had like thromb internal hemorrhoids, thrombosed, where we had to do an IND and remove the clot. So that was pretty cool. We also had um, suspicious lesion removal of the hands where it just looked cancerous. So we excised it and did a finger flap. And I got a chance to close on, a, on some of those procedures. Excuse me. Um, I saw a lat coli. I saw a lap hernia repair, I saw an inguinal hernia and got a chance to actually put my fingers up in the inguinal canal and actually feel the bulge, which was cool because if you remember or if you saw my um, pediatric end of rotation review video, I talked about how I had to do a lot of sports physicals and how I was checking for hernias, but I kind of sort of didn't I knew what was abnormal by reading the book but I didn't get a chance to feel anything thankfully because they were too well not too young but you wouldn't want to wish nothing abnormal on a person let alone a child but I didn't get a chance to feel it there but I did get a chance to feel it here so that was cool um, I made in good with one of the anesthesiologists or nurse anesthetists and um, I got a chance to monitor patients while they were sleeping for endoscopies, which I thought was really, really, really cool. And I got a chance to learn a lot more about the pharmacological side and the physiological aspects um, of the drug. And yeah, it was cool. The pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics of the drug. It was cool. Um, I also got a chance to use the scope a couple of times when we were doing endoscopies and I got a chance to assist in um, putting in peg tubes so we would run the EGD down to the stomach, um, stick the needle, drag it up through the mouth, put in the piece, drag it back down. Like It was cool. I got a chance to do that. Um, I did something what is called follow. So I got a chance to follow the physician as he was suturing. You will pull up the piece, he'll pull it through, grab the next piece, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Or I got a chance to have my pickups on one side and he got his pickups on the other side. 
and um, I would follow him with that as he would use the bovi to get through the subcutaneous tissue as we were doing an open procedure on the abdomen. Um, I got a chance to see, um, what is it called? The epidermal vessels when we opened up someone to do an open um, inguinal hernia repair. I got a chance to touch that. I got a chance to touch the, um, oh, what is it called? It's a tendon, the Achilles tendon, because we did a guillotine, which we just removed the ankle of a septic patient. Um, what else? I got a chance to touch the rectus abdominis, the fascia. Um, I got a chance to touch a gallbladder. Um, it was weird, but I actually got a chance to see an OBGYN procedure because that's where I'm going next for my last required rotation. And the lady had lost her child at nine weeks and we, we had to remove the POC or the products of conception by doing a, a dilation and suction. Not a DNC, a dilation and suction where it was actually cool to watch the OBGYN. She put in all these little speculum looking things into the cervix and each one was bigger than the other one. So it just opened it up more and more and more. And then she put the suction in and just suctioned out all the tissue. Luckily, it wasn't like anything that looked like a fetus yet. But it was just all tissue and blood, tissue and blood. And it's a blind procedure. So just like a DNC, if you don't get all the tissue and products out of the uterus it can cause infection or hemorrhage bleeding and then the patient will be back and it'll be a, a hot mess so I don't know how OBGYNs do it because that would scare me every time I do that I would in my mind be getting ready for a malpractice suit because you never know like there's no way for you to see in there to make sure you got everything so you just hope so you just keep going but you don't want to be too rough or whatever because you don't want to perforate the uterus so it's just like I don't have time for that but big ups to OBGYNs who do surgery y'all got this um so my last little segment is what I used um to prepare for my end of rotation exam and I used the pants book I used the syllabus my school gave me to review and I used smarty pants and with smarty pants dot com he um steven can't pronounce his last name but he also has um a podcast which he has a general surgery one and i listened to that and there's also another podcast called general surgery 101 but that was more for not the end of rotation exam but more for rotation so when they ask you questions on certain procedures they pretty much go over the whole procedure the complications the benefits the medication medical treatment if any at the end all in like 15 minutes so that's an awesome app and they also have a website it's called general surgery 101 I am a podcast fanatic, so you know I come through for you with the podcast. Um, so that was it. I am actually in scrubs today because in an hour or two, I'm actually about to go do my OSCE. So I'm actually filming this early for y'all, and I'm probably going to edit it throughout the week and have it ready for you at the end of the week by the time you see this because this is a busy, busy, busy week for me. We're going into next month. I'm getting ready for my OBGYN rotation, which is um, in a whole nother city, and I'm actually going to that city to stay, so I have to pack and prepare. And since I'm gonna be there for that whole month, I'm actually gonna be there during my birthday, so I'm preparing for that. So it's a lot going on. I just wanted to let you guys know, um, we are in the middle of doing our capstone project, like I told you before. It's a paper. I'm doing a community outreach. Um, I'll tell you more about that as I get there. We're also preparing to register for our pants exam. Um, I'm also looking for jobs. I'm also applying to post-residency um, programs, which I will share which ones later. Um, and it's just a very exciting time. My CV is together. Um, I'm getting my personal statement together. Actually, today I have a meeting for that. So I'm just all over the place getting my life together. But y'all, um, I have come a long way. 
Yesterday we got a chance to meet the second class of our program and they are awesome individuals and I wish them all the much success. Um, I am here to share all my resources, books, and podcasts that I use to help me along the way with them. And I'm just so excited as our program is taking off, it's getting more recognition and we are growing as um, a class and as an institution. So that's it for this segment, General Surgery. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please contact me. I have my um, information listed down below. I probably just only have my Instagram. Um, I could put my email address. Just been kind of nervous to do that. Or you just leave a comment or send me a message on here and that'd be great and if there's anything I can help you with don't hesitate to ask again my name is Reese PA student second year about to graduate in December whoa and I will see you guys back next month in another five more weeks take care y'all